Shamai and welcome to Bitcoin Coffee Break, the show where we have a quick look at the Bitcoin price and some of the markets may be affecting it. Um, I'm here in sunny San Francisco for the Bitcoin conference. I've set up a couple of arcade machines over here. And um, we've got some more arcade, mach arcade machines over here with the little modules I make on BTC IoT. So that's pretty cool. Uh, looking forward to the event. I thought I'd try and get one of these videos in this morning because it doesn't officially start till nine, even though people are starting to roll in now. Um, the, I haven't done one of these videos for a while, so it should be interesting. The price of Bitcoin is at $11,323, so the high of $11,470 and a low of uh, $11,000. So since we last did our video, I think we would, when we last did a video, we were sort of at the uh, $8,000 range. And we did say that it was going to pop through, hit 9000 and then once it broke through 9000 it wasn't going to stay there very long before, you know, smashing 10000 and beyond. And that's pretty much what it's done. Um, I was really impressed with the price a couple of days ago. Uh, it was able to, that was quite an important um, resistance area. Well, we're still kind of in it actually, um, of about, uh, yeah, about $11,000 here, which you can see in the past has been quite an important uh, resistance zone and price point. But we've managed to smash through that and we're now 11,300 and we've, we're almost hit 11,500. So I don't see this bull run stopping anytime soon. Uh, the price is going up and it's going up quite dramatically. Um, so let's have a look at the news feed, shall we? Um, uh, France uh, central bank governor Facebook Libra may seek, may, must seek a banking license. Um, so obviously, you know, all this Libra coin stuff's kind of kicked off since the last time we did a video. Um, um, they've released the right white paper and um, they've got like, their fancy website and so on. I'm not that critical of Libra, actually. I think it's a, an interesting project. It's permission blockchains, it's using BFT. Um, there's some uh, cool people working on the project who've been in distributed systems for a very long time. They're clearly pouring a lot of money into it. Um, I, I, initially, I just dismissed it as Zuckbox, um, but from what they're saying, uh, when, they actually, when Libra actually launches, uh, Facebook will just be one of like 100 nodes, people running nodes, and then it will kind of be like a federated blockchain thing. Um, so. It's also obviously pegged to a basket of assets, which is uh, going to provide some stability. So it's going to be the stable coins to kill all stable coins, but that doesn't mean it, it can take on Bitcoin for Bitcoin's digital gold property, um, which a lot of us have been saying for a long time. So um, for payments, maybe maybe Libra coins a good idea. You know, maybe it would be useful for people. I'm sure it'll be a better version of money uh, than what we've currently got. So you know, that's a win. Um, and it'll be it'll be more stable, so m more useful as day-to-day -day currency money. Uh, but it will very much, you know, help draw people towards Bitcoin, as a lot of people, other people have said. Uh, but Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin's digital gold, and it's got all of those commodity uses which people are starting to discover, such as the digital identity thing, which Microsoft are doing, um, leveraging the Bitcoin blockchain and the, all the power consumption to help uh, give people more privacy. So uh, Bitcoin is incredibly important; it's not going anywhere soon. Uh, but Libra Coin is also something we shouldn't dismiss, and we should, you know, we should look into a little bit more. Um, what other little news articles have we got here? Demand for new Bitcoin miners is again outstripping supply. Uh, Bitcoin, will BTC reach 20K before summer ends? Yes, most probably. Uh, I think will BTC reach 20K before the, the, the month ends is, is probably a, a better question. Um, let's have a look at Litecoin. So Litecoin's at $132.7. It's had a high of 136.9 and a low of $128.7. Um, it's still relatively decoupled from Bitcoin, which is really interesting because a lot of the other altcoins, the main altcoins, ones you actually have any value, real value, um, are very much just uh, follow it, tracking Bitcoin's price movements. So as Bitcoin goes up, people just diversify a little bit of their portfolio into, you know, Ethereum or Monero or whatever. Um, whereas uh, Litecoin is just uh, doing its own thing. It's continuing to go up um, in that channel which it built. Uh, it hit the top of that channel and then bounced around at the top and now it's dropped back down towards the, the bottom of that channel. So it seems to be quite an important channel. So, uh, you know, so yeah, really interesting on Litecoin there. Ethereum, Ethereum is doing what it's been doing for you know forever. It's just a fuzzy version of the Bitcoin price. Every time Bitcoin goes up a l little bit, then Ethereum goes up a little bit more. And every time Bitcoin drops a little bit, Ethereum drops a little bit more. Um, so it's like a more exaggerated version of uh, Bitcoin's price movement. So not, not really yeah, much to see there really. Monero is pretty much doing the same. Um, yeah, pretty much doing the same. Uh, Monero is at $114.8, had $118.4, and a low of $114.4. Let's have a look at gold. Now, um, 
it's exciting that Bitcoin's going up in price, but I kind of have known for a long time that it's going to go up in price. And I think a lot of us have, while well, we've just been waiting for the, the bull run to happen. Um, but gold, I mean, gold has been testing that $1,350 price point for the past six years. Look at this. Um, as we've, we've, we've covered on this show, and uh, it's finally managed to smash through it, and it's, uh, it's skyrocketing. Uh, it's, uh, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if it makes that movement, which we thought it would make, of an extra kind of $300 taken up to like $1,600 and something dollars before it sort of stables out a little bit. Um, and that seems to be an important price point here as well. So yeah, I would say $1,600 is, is where gold will probably end on this, on this run. At the moment, it's at $1,435, which is incredible. It's had a high of $1,442 and a low of $1,421. Let's have a little look at the news feed, shall we? Uh, Wall Street falls on trade and certainty, US-Iranian tensions. So the US-Iranian thing is still kicking off. Uh, people, are, More and more people are starting to realize Trump is, in fact, a lunatic and is going to have a, a detrimental effect on world markets. Um, and he's probably a gold bug and he's just trying to pump his gold bags. Dollar raises 2019 gains and searches for stronger support ahead of Fed speeches. So it's looking pretty gloomy for the dollar. Uh, gold goes boom. Um, this high trend resistance is bulldozed by bulls. So yeah, the bulls on gold, they finally be released um, uh, and people are just pouring a lot of liquidity into gold. They know it's gonna go up and they know it's gonna go up significantly. It's been building this for, for, for six years, it's been, trying to, it's been trying to do this. So like the S&P 500, the S&P 500 has dropped. Um, it did kind of hit that, that all time high, well, that, that high of, um, of, of May and then the high of also um, October last year. Um, which did look quite bullish for 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 the, for the S&P 500, but then since then, obviously the you know Iranian Trump stuffs happened. There's more geopolitical problems, um, and more people are hedging into gold. There was a weird point at the beginning of this, well, early yeah, a few days ago, where um, gold was up, the stocks were up, Bitcoin, everything just seemed to be up. Um, but now the stocks are, are, are reacting as they should. Gold's gone up, the stocks are going to go down. Uh, I really like how gold and Bitcoin are going up at the same time. It's really interesting to me. Um, let's have a little look here. So uh, here's when the stock market rally would trigger fear of missing out among investors. So they, they still think there's going to be uh, some FOMO in the stock market. I don't think it's going to happen. Nine ways to squeeze the most out of this refresh bull market. Blah, blah, blah. Let's have a look at the, the Bitcoin Reddit, shall we? See what Bitcoin lands do. We've still got our Bitcoin state chains video at the top, which I still haven't watched. It's an embarrassment. I need to watch. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, Bitcoin hodlers, yeah, well, Bitcoin hodlers have also over the, every bear cycle, they become more and more, oh, okay, <laughs> look at this guy, um, more, they become more and more patient, um, so uh, it also, you know, makes a stronger base for Bitcoin, because they've, they've seen it all before, they become more battle-hardened. Uh, there's no mercy for shit coins, underwater altcoins, Bitcoin, 11k, yeah, and they're drowning. Uh, so yeah, bunch of you know, bullish, yeah, bullish uh, memes and stuff. Any interesting articles there? Not really. Nope. Nope. No. It's all pretty boring. Um, so not much going on in Bitcoin Reddit today. Um, let's have a look here. What have we got here? So uh, no, it's not Facebook. Bitcoin price already up 200% in 2019 before Libra. So a lot of people are accrediting the Libra news to Bitcoin's price rally. Um, but I actually think that the, the Libra guys are doing a clever bit of publicity by releasing um, news as Bitcoin's going up. Uh, so I actually think it's the other way around, you know, chicken and egg and all that. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in Hong Kong. The Chinese people are diversifying and putting their, their money somewhere where it's out of state control. Um, and Bitcoin is a very wise place to do that. Um, and uh, you've also got the geopolitical stuff. Uh, if you look at Google Trends for people searching Bitcoin, it's down like, so in 2017 when we had a bull run, um, the Google Trends piece of people searching Bitcoin is, is comparatively, it's at 12% compared to what it was um, in 2017. So that, that means that it's probably bigger investors investing in gold. It's Wall Street, it's those Wall Street on ramps, it's Fidelity, uh, it's big, big investment funds investing in Bitcoin. So the Libra stuff, they're just like an altcoin, you know, they're just, they're just, um, uh, uh, benefiting off Bitcoin's um, bull, bull run price rally, good news season. You know? Let's have a little look here. So, uh, yeah, another article. So people are starting to wake up to this, which is good. 
Um, uh, as I said, LibreCoin, the white paper, it's interesting. Check it out. Look at some of the people who attached the, the project. Uh, it isn't just a shit coin, you know. Um, it is the stable to coin to be all stable coins. So, yeah, it's um, it's uh, it, it's very hard thing to do as a Bitcoiner to admit that there may be another project which may have some um, validity. But yeah, I think it's important that we do. And we don't buy our head in the sand too much. So, yeah, Bitcoin Magazine are uh, sponsoring sponsoring the conference. So I thought it was important I'd probably get one of their articles up. Some, some, this is cool. Samurai Wallet's uh, privacy enhancing Whirlpool now in public beta. So this is um, part of their coin join service. Uh, something called Whirlpool. It's dependent upon a lot of people using it at the same time for it to be effective. And then I suppose what people also using it uh, properly because um, sometimes they don't use these coin join services properly. The users connect and provide inputs and change addresses and the cryptographically blinded version of the address they want to send the private, the private coins to go to. The server signs the tokens and returns them. The user anonymously reconnect the un, unbind their output addresses um, that, and return them to the server. The server can see all the outputs were sound by um, and so all the outputs had come from valid participants. Later people reconnect and sign. So it's pretty neat, pretty neat technology, well worth having a look at. So good luck to Samurai, they're doing some excellent work in the space. Uh, I've heard a lot of people actually saying that they, they want the GUI to improve, but I think I can see, I can see maybe it'd be nice to have like two options where you can switch to the kind of basic and advanced um, and then have it really basic for, for noobs and stuff. Uh, and then they can switch to advanced and then have all these um, options. Um, but I think as long, as long as there are like 10% or 5% of people using Samurai Wallet and doing coin join, um, then that's good for everyone else's coins as well because it just adds general fungibility. It's, um, it's cutting, you know, it's deleting, erasing history of coins and where coins have been from, come from. So uh, it's, um, yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of clearing all that data which um, is uh, useful for you know, um, uh, and, uh, you know, people who analyze blockchains. So yeah, so that's pretty much it for, for, to, for this morning. Uh, I hope you have an excellent day. I'm going to try and grab a couple of interviews. I did see Satoshi Nakamoto, the, the you know, original Satoshi Nakamoto walking around, so I'm going to try and grab him. There's a couple of really interesting people I'd like to talk to. I'm running a couple of tutorials making my gizmos. Um, one of the little projects we've been working on uh, the past couple of days with uh, uh, Stefan, um, who I'll, um, uh, we should be releasing a tutorial for, is, is, is making a hardware wallet out of an ESP32, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, so look out for those on, on World Crypto Network. Apart from that, have an excellent day, and um, I shall see you tomorrow, hopefully.